All right, uh, now next up is a keynote um, by KPMG on uh, the German crypto regulation um, and uh, it is called Enabler or Limiting Factor for Market Positioning and I would like to welcome Max Eberle and Felix Kramer on stage. While they are joining me here, um, I'd like to remind you that please post your questions um, in the Telegram group. Feel free to raise your hand if we have time left after the talks. Um, we'd be happy to discuss them with our fantastic speakers. And I give over to you. Have fun. Thank you. So all of us here today share at least one common passion, and that is our appreciation for crypto as an emerging asset class. My name is Max. This is my dear colleague, Felix. Now, Felix and I are both from KPMG. And it's the reason why we have a second passion, and that is regulation. I'm not so sure that is a commonly shared pa passion across uh, the audience here, but uh, we'll see what we can do about that with our presentation here. We will spare you our CV details and skip the KPMG ad block. Instead, we dive right in and want to share some of the insights that we gained from our crypto projects across this year. So consultants like Threes, our structure here is a, a three-part structure. We want to start with the market. Uh, we want to give you our observation points of what uh, is moving the market in Germany right now. And please bear in mind, uh, when we talk about the market, we are not talking about DLT and interbanking settlement, but we are talking about crypto as an asset class. Second, we want to have a look at how the regulatory environment is influencing corporate strategy. And third, we want to give a brief outlook of what we can anticipate in the near-term future. So let's start with uh, some of the discussion insights that we gained with our clients. And please bear in mind, uh, all of our customers have a very different starting point. But what is really striking is that, nonetheless, there are four major influencing factors that really stand out across the board. First is time to market. Our customers say and appreciate that don't, they don't have time. They don't have time to wait for Mika to come into force because by then, the market in Germany is already divided up. And you don't want to leave chances to reverse solicitation. Second, value extraction. So the thesis is everyone who wants to be in crypto now is already in crypto. However, the individual revenue contribution per each customer right, is Vastly, um, vastly different across uh, the, the respective segment. So only a few customers are really respons responsible for the, for the major revenues. Hence the reason why our customers need to think about growth. They need to be think about where's the growth coming from, what are the preferences of those new customers, and what are the products that we need to offer to them. Which brings me to the third point, the licensed product fit. You will find that in a regulated environment, nothing impairs your product range uh, as your license scope. That's why you really have to carefully consider and balance what I talked earlier about the time to market and speed and the scope of licenses. So once you have a crypto custody and a crypto trading license, that's just the mere start. But Felix will go into that in, in a few minutes. Then you need to think about what about crypto trading? What about crypto derivative trading? What about actually being an exchange with the real exchange price mechanism. Now we talked about 
customers, revenues. Let's come to the cost side, the funding. The narrative that was true over the last years, hyper growth, VC funds want triple, triple, double, double, and that's your business plan over the next four years, that's no longer valid. Some very boring things like reasonable budgeting, not over hiring, and um, really having a focus on what you want to achieve. Kill your pet projects and kill anything that's unprofitable. That becomes super interesting because you want to have enough runway to experience the next boom phase in crypto. And with that, I hand over to Felix to have a closer look at the market. Thank you. So the market, we have tried to uh, differentiate in certain types of uh, competitors. We call them market types. So what we see in the market is that there are mainly three competitors. We, of course, have the traditional, becoming traditional crypto exchanges, which are the crypto natives and by nature are the biggest competitor in the market. But we also see that neo brokers and neo banks quickly picked up their pace in terms of their products and their offering in crypto products. Last but not least, we see the traditional financial institutions, which are, we call them the late majority. They are mostly on the sidelines as of now because they are assessing whether it is a good option for them, a good business case for them to also offer financial products and whether it fits in their DNA and also, of course, in their risk management and so on. But what we have also seen in the market, which is, as of now, quite fragmented in a way that there are quite many crypto exchanges, that there are two main determinants in the market. On the, un on the one hand, Max already told you about it, the regulatory frame. On the other hand, we see the customers. We are not talking about the crypto natives, but we are talking about the first wave of crypto adoption in the financial services industry. So we are talking about retail customers who, are, who have been former customers of maybe a traditional financial institution or a new bank or broker. Therefore, what we see is that customers focus on trust, trust over price, the price. Um, we often see that proprietary trading is the predominant license used for the, um, for the um, execution of proprietary trading or crypto exchanges in Germany. Um, therefore, the price isn't really in the focus of the customers as it, is, as it is hidden in the spread. But we also see that the customers want to be, um, want to have an offering that they are used to with their financial uh, institutions they have used before, so they want to be comforted. But they also want to use the product range they are used to, meaning they do not want to be limited to one product, but they want to have the whole range and do not have to use like five different financial institutions in order to be able to um, execute their financial uh, business. On the other hand, the regulatory frame. We have seen that Germany is one of the earliest adopters of a really dedicated crypto regime, mainly due to the implementation of the crypto custody in the German Banking Act in 2019. And the regulation does not only pose a level playing field in Germany, but it also poses a barrier to actively um, work the German market as a crypto exchange. Therefore, what is needed to be for other players that want to be active in the German market is to apply for a license. And this mainly then comes down to convincing BaFin that you are ready to, on the one hand, offer these services, but on the other hand, that you are able to protect your customers. Therefore, the regulator has a close eye on IT security, on compliance, but also on sourcing actions, as most often other services are sourced out to specific providers who are best in that field. But the regulatory frame to elaborate more on that, and uh, for that reason, um, we have divided uh, this slide into um, crypto, crypto as an asset, Max said it before, 
and uh, MIFID products. This is for the sake of making it easy. Uh, bear with us. Um, this might not be the very exact uh, legal term, but with MIFID, we want to say traditional financial instruments. Having that said, um, the regulatory frame does not only pose a threat to competitors entering the German market, but it also provides for stability. Competitors or financial institutions uh, in the German market have a fixed point which they can assess and see what is needed be to be allowed in Germany. So with, um, on the one hand, the products Max said, but also the time to market, we have seen there's a, a difference in, in, uh, in goals, as you, on the one hand, want to offer your whole product range, which you're used to, um, to offer in a non-regulated space, but you also want to be timely in the market in order to, to grab a market share. Therefore, the first adopters in Germany we have seen uh, most likely chose the um, shown setup on the left side, meaning they applied for proprietary trading in crypto custody, which you have probably seen in the BaFin database already yourself. Therefore, they are regulated within the German Banking Act, limiting their financial um, instruments to crypto assets, meaning they cannot offer traditional financial instruments. With now the crypto venture being uh, in place for quite some time, what we of course see is that the volatility of uh, the cryptos, of the rather serious crypto coins, um, is going down. Therefore, leveraged products are even more relevant as they already have been before to these institutions. Um, but leveraged products are not being able to be offered by the setup on the left side. Therefore, what we see is that MIFID products, I said it before, we mean traditional financial products such as derivatives, are becoming more and more relevant. Therefore, the regulatory framework comes back into play as it does not only again, poses threat, but also a guidance on how these structures are going to elaborate as they are only, mainly only two options. On the one hand, as you are now applying, applying for non-crypto assets, um, this means that you either have to separate the crypto custody or have an entity which only focuses on the second um, financial instrument um, tree, um, namely the MIFID products. And this again is our uh, understanding of how the market could further evaluate. Um, but it does, of course, not mean that it has to be that way, because of course you can just stay a crypto exchange without applying for MIFID products, if that in the future will be still a valid case. So this is a colorful chart, bear with us. We will unpack that together. What we are trying to depict here is a simplified view of the German crypto market. So on the one axis, we have a product range. And again, this is only one way to look at the world. We have the product range, ranging from your classical crypto assets only, to the replicated cryptos and the MIFID products, your stocks, your bonds. And then the second axis is the infrastructure setup. Basically just a question, are you partnering up in terms of infrastructure or do you own your own infrastructure? Now in this two by two metrics, we try to allocate the three archetypes that Felix introduced. You have your crypto exchanges in blue on the left upper-hand corner. You have your neo brokers and uh, neo banks in green in the second square. And your traditional financial institutions in pink in the third square. Now, those three players have one thing in common. They have a platform with, ideally, already KYC customers. So the question is, what are those archetypes doing with those KYC customers? 
and the strategic directions that we see for square number one for the crypto exchanges is that they use this market cycle to enhance their range of product offering by applying for the right licenses and adding uh, MIFID products and being able to really offer um, their entire crypto product portfolio. Second, our new brokers, think Trade Republic, they want to own the infrastructure. They should decrease their dependency uh, in terms of partnerships to really take control in terms of operations and costs for scaling up in the future. Thirdly, the financial institutions. There are a few that uh, are really pioneering this, uh, in this field, but the vast majority stays on the sideline, which is a pity because they already have the customers. They have the trust of their customers. They have the sales team and the regulatory know-how. So, in essence, you want to be, no matter what type of archetype you are, you want to be in the right upper-hand corner. Ideally, you are a two-trick pony in terms of products, being able to offer not only crypto, but MIFID products, and you want to own your critical infrastructure. Yeah, looking at the time, I guess we just skip through these real quick. Um, what we wanted to give you with us are some key facts we thought that are coming into place or might be relevant for the German crypto market to steadily further involve. Um, we have seen that, and already talked about it, that the regulation is quite a, a big factor for the crypto market. And um, what we also already said before is that we do not think in MIFID products, so traditional financial products um, versus crypto products, but we see them going alongside. I've also said it before that trust is uh, a big factor for customers, especially for the non-native crypto customers, which are now becoming more and more relevant, especially with more and more institutional customers um, coming into the game. We see that the regulation needs to be really thought through and the um, provider need to st stick really close and uh, have a clean, clean setup of their, um, of their uh, company and their offering. But we also see that customers are already used to being uh, offered a very individualized product offering and that they also um, expect from their crypto offering. But we also see, as I said before, the crypto market is quite fragmented. We also see that there will be some consolidation of companies which are maybe not um, fulfilling the first three mentioned key points um, or are just um, not being able to stick out for whatever reasons. But we also see, and Max said it before, that having KYC customers, and we also heard it in the uh, presentation before, they are quite a big asset, and uh, it's an asset which should be further, uh, further built upon and uh, further focused upon as, as it will become more and more relevant. But I guess we have some, some more announcements. <laughs> One announcement. We started with Market Insights, and we want to close out with Market Insights. We partnered up with our dear friends at uh, BTC Echo and are launching today, at this very minute, our survey, Digital Assets in Germany. You can go to their website right now. The survey is open. We warmly invite you to participate. Thank you. Or just use the QR code, which is displayed right now. Yeah. <laughs>